So if you want to feel a little naughty this Christmas season, this recipe is for you. It's the Great Taylor Sea Baker Show. Hello, my name is Taylor C. Baker, and I can juggle, I can't, and I am baking my way through the Great British Bake Off technical challenges in hopes to live up to my namesake and become a better baker. And today we have a delightful holiday edition of the Great Taylor C. Baker Show. We are making sausage wreaths. It's gonna look just like this. It's not. It's going to taste just like this. It's also not. But it is going to look and taste like some sort of breaded, delicious, meaty, savory goodness. So let's learn how to make it. Oh my gosh, I'm stuck. First up, let's make our dough. Now we have all of our ingredients for our dough. One and a quarter cup of flour, four tablespoons of chilled butter. So we are going to mix in the butter with our hands, which I love to do. Once we have this crumbly, we are going to put in six to eight tablespoons of water. This dough is called, and I quote, the Cheats Rough Puff. And a big key to the Cheats Rough Puff in this case is the fact that you need to freeze your butter. So not all of it is frozen. You use a lot of butter in this recipe that's not frozen. For the frozen butter in this recipe, you need one stick. I need to start making dough ASMR videos. It's just this sound. So we're gonna grate half a stick of butter over the bottom two thirds. I know how to do this. The butter freezing here is the, the cheating method of doing this. If you watch my Queen Aman episode, tap here to view that, you will see the magic of making pastry from scratch the non-cheaters way. Fold down the top third, and then fold up the bottom third as if folding a letter. Turn it 90 degrees, roll it out again, and repeat that same process using the other half of our frozen butter. Pause for dancing. Wrap this in cling foam and chill it for 30 minutes. So the next step is while our butter dough mixture is in the fridge, we are going to make the filling. I was trying to spare you the tear-filled experience of cutting these onions, but I think I was about to have my actor moment. I think listening to your drum. You know, acting is hard. I can tell you from firsthand experience, acting is really rough, but when it comes to tearful scenes, I feel like we just found a stepping stone to an easier tying scene. <laughs> I don't know, it's convincing. <laughs> Good night, nurse. It called for two onions, which didn't seem like enough to me, like a caramelized onion mix, but this is actually a lot of onion. Why don't you, why don't you cut it if you're really small? Baby? Please do tell me your anti-onion crying tips in the comments below. And now for something completely happy. Puppies are born every day, and that is a joyous fact. And that's also worth crying about, because that's really exciting. And scene. And now we're back from onion tears. And even though I've already cut them and fixed my makeup, I'm still crying because the onions are in the air that I'm breathing. So I'm going to go ahead and make my filling. So we're gonna go ahead and take these ingredients and take them on over to the stove. This recipe is something that you can really make your own. Whatever filling you wanna use, whatever blows your skirt up. I'm gonna be doing pork. So we have all the pieces of our filling now. We just have to mix it all together. This is a hand mixing thing. Although this recipe includes mixing raw meat with your hands which doesn't have the same joy I would feel when I mix the flour, but let's do it. So I have a pound of minced pork loin, a quarter of a cup of breadcrumbs, one teaspoon of dried sage, half a teaspoon of ground mace, which I think of as like, oh no, get away from me, I'm spraying you in the face with mace, but it's basically another version of nutmeg. Once we have this mixed up, we are going to add in our caramelized onions. This is such a weird symphony of smells. So now we have all the pieces of our puzzle. Pastry, we have our filling, and we are going to roll it out to a 17 by 11 inch rectangle, add some mustard, put our filling out, roll her up. I have preheated my oven, to 400 and I'm going to do a line of Dijon mustard. Make some dots instead of a line, that's pretty. And now we are going to mold this heap of meat into a cylinder all the way down. I whipped up a quick egg wash and now we're gonna paint it down one side of the pastry. 
This looks like I'm making a thing, y'all. Now we're gonna fold the non-egg wash side over the meat and the egg wash side over the pastry. Place this on here to where the seam is on the bottom. Beautiful, your sausage wreath, everyone. Here's the, the kicker. Cut two thirds of the way up the roll, every section, every like couple of inches. So that will make the wreath pattern. And once we join the ends, we need to turn the cut slices to where the meat side shows upwards. Brilliantly beautiful. And if you didn't use all that egg wash from before, keep it because now we are going to get that golden brown color and paint on top of this heap of meat pastry. And there we have it. It is circular, so that's a good start. The final step before she goes into the oven is to sprinkle it with a mixture of black and regular white sesame seeds. That instantly makes this look more like bread. You put this in the oven at 400 degrees for 40 to 50 minutes. Fare thee well, sausage roll. May you resemble that wreath when you come out. While our beautiful sausage wreath is in the oven, we are going to do the final step, which is making the cranberry sauce. We are gonna need a cup of frozen cranberries, one third a cup of sugar, one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar, a quarter teaspoon of allspice. So let's go over to the stove and watch the cranberry magic. Three, two, one. Oh, hello, pretty. You look wreath-like. This looks pretty lovely. I mean, shape-wise, that it's just identical. They're two peas. This smells really good, and it actually turned out pretty wreath-like. Huh? That looks like a wreath. And I made my little cranberry sauce, and I put it in a teacup to be extra British. Now, usually I like to cut my loaves, especially on any sort of bread or pastry week with a large Paul Hollywood knife, but the whole concept of this bake is that it is tear and share. So let me select a piece, and first of all, before I do that, it's super, super important because I don't cook with meat a lot, especially with raw pork, raw sausage, anything. I did do the little temperature check and made sure it was a minimum of 145 degrees, and this was like 180, so maybe overcooked but I wanted to make sure I got that nice brown goldeny color. Oh, it's still very hot. It's nice and crisp on the bottom. This is amazing. This would be the most wonderful, perfect Christmas breakfast sausage roll ever. I didn't think I'd like it with the cranberry because I'm someone who always avoids cranberry sauce at Thanksgiving, but it really brings the whole dish together. It is amazing. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please hit subscribe, follow along with my baking misadventures. I do new videos every Thursday. Cheers. I think that's good. And subscribe, y'all. This was tasty. It's the Great Taylor Sea Baker Show.